heart center. We're going to link the breathing. So we'll keep the hands pointing down just beneath the solar plexus and we'll pull in with the in breath. Pulling the hands up. And then we'll push it down. In. Out. In. Out. Just keeping that focus through the nose. In. Out. Relaxing the shoulders. In. Out. Tongue on the palate of your mouth, the roof of your mouth. In. Out. Move back to the center, and now we'll go side to side. Moving through. Again, linking with the breathing. Same thing to apply just through the nose. Tongue on the roof of your mouth. Focus and breathe. And then we'll go for our spirals. We'll draw in a circle with our fingertips. Once again, link the breath with the movement. Just breathing in through the nose. And out through the nose. Back and then we'll go for the opening the lotus with the book of comfort, nice and gently rolling through, making sure that the wrists are touching. And we want as much of the hand to touch while we're doing this action. All the way along the backs, pushing the palms out, drawing it back in. The more you get to touch, the more mobility you're going to get in those wrists. And then change direction. Okay, so now we'll come to back to stillness. Take the hands to the hips, to the waist, and then we'll draw a half a circle with the head, chin to shoulder. Roll through. And then we'll go to the shoulder, looking over the shoulder. Take your time with these exercises. Don't rush the neck, the neck exercises. Really pay attention to that movement in there. And try and pull the shoulders back. And you want your shoulder blades to be meeting. Well, that's what you're visualizing in your head. Floor to ceiling. Mm -hmm. 
and then we're going to go here to shoulder. And then we come back to stillness in the center, and I'm going to start by shrugging the shoulders. Just a nice deep shrug. I tend to count, go for 10. However, you can link it with your breath and go for a certain number of breaths, or you can set yourself time limits with all the, these exercises, depending upon what you're achieving and how long you've got. Go forwards, nice, deep, strong. Keeping that rhythm going as you move through. Then we come backwards. What we do in one direction, we must always do it in the other direction. And what we do on one side, we must always do on the other side, or at least aim to do. Some of the free flow movements, you tend to lose track of what you're up to. And then we'll come back to the center. Then we'll take the right shoulder forward. And then we'll take it backwards. And then we'll take the left shoulder forward. And then we'll take the right shoulder back, left shoulder backwards. So doing a couple of rotations on that left side going backwards. Bring the right shoulder in going forwards. And now the right shoulder goes backwards, the left shoulder goes forwards. And then we'll bring ourselves back to still. So now we're going to pop a twist in. And I like this nice and simple idea. And, and your lines on the floor can help you. Keep your knees above your ankles and just twisting the hip. You want to push your right hand past your left shoulder, your left hand behind your back. And then if we switch the movement, bend the knees a little bit more so you can need to closer to a sitting horse. Just bring that twist through. Nice and gentle, move it and push. And each time, see whether you can increase that twist a little bit further. So now the hand that's coming behind you, if when we lean this time, we lean out with an elbow strike. So it's as if we're turning that elbow behind us. Trying to focus on those knees, not switching and twisting too far. And push. Once we've done a couple more of them, then I'm going to take the arm out behind. Return. Twist and reach. You can do this quick, flick it out, and you can do this nice and slow and control. And play around with the two action. Stretch it nice and quick. And then bringing it into a slow, stretch it out, twisting the body around. It helps give your hand, the, your shoulder a push with the hand. And then we'll come back to stillness. So now we're going to go for a figure of eight with the hand. Remember, when we do the figure of eight, so remember this helps me be on a diagonal. When we go for the figure of eight, you want to complete. One side of the eight on one side, and then the other side of the eight comes behind you. So we're flipping through with this nice big 
dynamic twist. The left hand can tuck behind your back, you can sit on your center line. We're just working that right hand through. Nice big circles. And then we're going to change direction without really thinking about it. So we're leading with the thumb. We're going to now lead with the little finger. And off we go. We change. Keeping that circle nice and long behind and front. And then we're going to switch. Other hand leads with the thumb. So we have a circle in front, it crosses on our pelvis, and then we circle behind. And again, I'm counting these, I'm going for 10. But you know, you can play around with this for a period of time. You can set a timer. There's no set way to do these. Fit them in with another practice, change direction. Fit them in before you do a run or playing football. Just keep things moving. I was uh, watching a little video clip earlier of, uh, again, I think it was from the, the Ego Portal site, and it was showing Sugar Ray Leonard, Maradona, and and then bring both hands together. We're showing, we're showing the movement practices and the things that they're doing. So these ideas, you know, that, that we're seeing now, they've been around for a very, very long time. Just different ways of moving, flowing, bring it down, lower into the hips. Think about how you turn and then we're going to go back to stillness. So that's kind of loosening up the spine, getting the breathing going. So now we need to do our side bend. So remember, we need a forward fold, a back bend, a side bend, twist, and balances. And then I've thrown in the, the head rotations as well. So there's six things we need to be looking at. So head rotation, we're done. We've got some twisting going on. So we've done that, so now we're going to go for some side bends. Nice and simple with the feet shoulder width apart. Comfortable distance, slight bend in the knees. And we're literally going to stand as if we're trapped between two pieces of glass. And we're just going to reach down. I don't have to come far. What's important is that I'm not getting pulled with my this and breaking the structure. And then as I come back, I'm just reaching past that knee. I'm reaching. And a little bit often is what's required with any practice. Just a little bit each day. Just pushing, feeling. Some days you might go further than other days. And then I'm going to pull that bag of shopping up. And these, you know, you can assist these with weights if you feel like you need to improve your strength. However, I, I, I have a big fan for working unassisted. Just using your own body weight and the ground. And then the arm comes over the top and it's just dangling past the head. Just a little bit of weight coming in. Hand is reaching past the neck. Yeah, how as you do it, as you bring your hand down along the leg, feel the much muscle structure. Pay attention to what's going on in your body. Listen to it and then straighten the arm up. Pushing through that side here a little bit further. Really stretching out those intercostals. And then we're going to come back to stillness. So now we're bringing in some hip movement. Nice big circles with the hips. And 
and then we're going to reach up and we're going to go for a back bend. You can keep your hands together and you can keep your hands together. I find that it's really beneficial when I do this. However, you might struggle with that. It doesn't matter whether you're if you've got a beach ball. It, what matters is that you're engaging your arms and reaching up. And then we're going to do a little forward fold. It's nice when you're doing a posture and you can feel your body shaking sometimes. And this pose is just surrender. You're not reaching for the floor, you don't reach for your ankles, you're just going to have a dangle. Dangle down. Just surrender to the floor. Swish the water around and draw yourself up to standing. We're going to walk the feet in. And we should be hip distance apart now. So we reach up again. Stretching through, engaging those arms, eyes looking up to your hands. Can pull a nice breath in this position, and then we plunge forwards again into our forward fold. Again, it's a surrender. If we link our arms, so our hands are grabbing the elbows, so we're making a box for our head to sit in. We can then put a little swing to either side, but we're still dangling. And then we'll release that, and then we'll bring ourselves back into standing. Then we'll draw the feet in together again. And then we're going to push up towards the seat. And then we forward fold. Surrender. Don't force it. If you can get your hands to the floor, great. If you can only get them to your shins or even your thighs, it doesn't matter. It's your practice. And then we'll swish that water around and then we'll draw ourselves back into standing. If we now pick the heel of the right foot up and we'll just rotate that knee. Nice loose rotation through the leg. The more you practice these things, the easier they become, the more embedded into your routine and then the other way. Now this is where we need to start adding and building tweaks on. So we're going to be working on our ankles and our legs on these next stages, but this is also coming into our balance. And then we draw up, and now we're going to draw a circle foot. Pick a point on the floor to take your gaze, or on the wall. Focused and rotate that foot in the circle. Now the other. And then we'll circle the foot. And go the other way. So you can get your foot parallel, you, you define parallel to the floor. Or at least your foot a little bit higher than where it is. Now circle with the knee. Nice big full circle. Don't worry if you need to touch the floor. Don't worry if you need to use your arms for balance. And then we'll go the other way. Now we'll place the right foot in front of the left foot. Toe, tip toes of the left foot on the heel. Just bend the knees a little bit. Straighten the back. Bring your hands to your heart center. Close your eyes. We're going to go for the count of 20.
nice. And now bring the left foot around by the side of your right foot onto the tiptoes, and then we circle through it. And then we'll go the other way. And then we draw the foot up. Seeing whether you can get your shin parallel to the foot. Again, you can use the wall for balance if you need to, or a broom handle to rotate the foot, or the back of a chair. It's all about practice. Go ahead, with the toe. Now we circle the foot. All the way. And now the knee. Change direction. And then place the left foot in front of the right foot. Hands to the heart center. And close the eyes. I'll try and do the 10 or the 20 a little bit quicker this time. <laughs> Not too quick. Try to get the balance. Right. Right. Okay, then open your eyes and we'll come back to having the feet show the distance apart. We're going to come down and we're going to do some squats. Now, you can play around with all of these exercises. You can make them more dynamic, more cardiovascular, um, more endurance space, depending upon what you want. Um, playing around with them in your head is really, really useful. So we're going to go for this wide legged position, almost as wide, well, as wide as use for a, a sit pull. We're going to bring the hands to the heart center and we're going to lower ourselves down into a squat. Let your feet just accommodate and then we want to be squatting so that the, we're sat on the chair and our shins are as close to parallel as we get. We're really working on this structure. And then we can play around here. We can hold this for a count. We can rise up. And then we can think about coming down slowly, setting yourself little challenges. So we could maybe we've done this where we count down from 10 down to one. But we could work with maybe trying to take 20 seconds to do the squat, just lowering ourselves down. Making sure that it's nice and comfortable, that the structure's right. About 10 seconds. Around about 20 seconds, we'll just hold this posture for a little bit longer. Just to make sure we're there, and then we'll come down into a squat. So we'll play around with our squat for a little bit because I think this practice, once you get past that initial, ow, I can't do this, I think it really does become beneficial. Currently, um, we should be doing some form of squat practice for 30 minutes a day. But I suppose if you think about our primal ancestors, who were sat in this position, who would be? hours at a time around the campfire or whatever they were doing. 
grooming one another. The left hand on the floor, in line with the left toes, right hand into the knee, and then we're just going to push that knee out. I'm going to go for 10. And then the hand comes down to the floor, and then we reach up to the ceiling. And you know, if you find this starts to get easier, you then can increase the numbers that you're doing. And then before you know it, you can be spending five minutes just doing your little squat routine. And then the right hand comes in line with the tongue, and then we push that knee out again, the left hand. I'm just going to go for 10. And then we're going to go for our reaches. And then we can bring the hands in up. Different stages, different levels, different people. Uh, you can use the hands in prayer position. Nod your head 10 times. You can bring that lower to lower your head, or you can stack your thumbs. Thumbs up, one, two, drop the head, and then start aiming to bring it down as you get lower. And we've got for 10 of them. Then when we've done so we'll just drop back onto our bone, straighten the legs out to alleviate some of that tension. And then we'll go for a nice stretch, forward fold. Up, simple twist. Up. Forward throw, up, simple twist. So, we're going to look at two transitions today, as well as some movement combinations. So we keep the legs out in front of us, and we'll just point the toes forward and come up into our reverse plank. We'll just have a little squish and a sway here. Just moving through it. And then we want to draw our feet in. So we come into a, a broken tabletop. We want our bum close to the floor. We shift the heels towards the feet. Shift back towards the hands. And then we're just going to focus. We're going to pick the left foot up. Off the floor, just an inch. We're going to hold it. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And I'm going to place it down. I'm going to pick the right hand up. Hold it. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, and then we'll place it down. Right foot, foot, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Left hand, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and down. Now we're going to work on our diagonals. The diagonals are how we move in these postures. So left foot, right foot, right hand even. Left foot, right hand. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And down. now we'll go for the diagonal on the other side. Right foot. Right, left hand, 10, 9, 
So now, from here, if we pick our right foot up off the floor and our left hand, we want to draw the right foot underneath us and place it on the floor so we come into our beast wall. Would you know? I want to now take the left leg underneath so we come back to the crack. And then I want to pick the left foot up again and draw it back. Just so we've just practiced those true transitions. And let's do it again underneath and through. And then we can switch back, under, take the same knee back under again. Left leg leads under, and then left leg leads under, and then the right leg comes under. And then we'll just drop into a rest position for a moment. So this is where you can take an opportunity to decompress your wrists, get ready for the next sequence of movements. So from here, we come into our position, our tabletop position, and we engage the knees. The knees come up. We want to shift the weight back onto the heels. And then we're going to shift that weight forwards. Drop back onto the heels. Shift the weight forwards. Lower the arms if you're going to do a press up. And then push yourself back into your squat. Arms come up. Push yourself forwards. Push yourself back. Forwards. Back. Forwards and back. Now we're going to drop into our beast and we'll just rest in a moment. Really powerful little transition they are. Really useful for going flipping through. Very much like our kneeling stand, kneeling flip, flip through into this posture and then forward and back up. You know, you can play around with all sorts of things. So, the knees come up, off the floor. Feel the posture, right foot comes up. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and down. Right hand comes up. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one and down. Left hand up. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and uh, left foot, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one and two. Now we're going for the diagonal. Right foot, left hand. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One and down. Then the opposite diagonal. Right hand, left foot. Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Have a little decompress. So now in your space, 
we're going to use these ideas now to move around. And then we're going to run out of, um, we're not going to run out of time because time is infinite, but we are going to have to call an end to the session at some point. Um, so we're going to spend another five minutes or so on some movement ideas. So when I now start moving, if I want to go forward from the bird crawl, up from the knees from the beast walk, and I'm working on opposite. So as the left foot goes forward, the right foot comes forward, the right hand comes forward even. Remember your pissy form, this bone here in the heel of your hand. That's where you're all right, and this will really help you with these exercises. It will really draw your movement into line with what you're doing. And then we can go backwards because we want to work on different planes. Once we've gone backwards, now using the same diagonal, contralateral, I think it's called. We can now move to the side. So now we need a transition. So we can use an underswitch. So we'll use the right leg, we'll pick the right leg up and we'll tuck under into our crab. Which will be nice and comfortable. Should be able to just swish the floor with your bone. And again, we start just moving across, forwards and backwards, really concentrating on that diagonal motion that you're trying to create between your body. And then we'll go sideways. And then we'll come back to the middle. And now we want to take the leg underneath again. So if we take the left leg under, that brings us back to our feast. So now, what we want to power through this time is we want to elongate that and we want to be bringing ourselves into a quadruped walk. Where we're moving through in down. Now remember your space is limited. This is a great hip opener. Using a lizard type posture, and then we crawl ourselves through, really trying to work where we're going, making sure that we're engaging much of our torso as we can. We'll come for a little rest for a moment. Have a kneel. Remember, you can always pop in twists, little relaxes and releases. Any posture that takes your fancy in these movements. We'll come back again, and then we'll push ourselves up for our tiger. And I, I like to do this one as if I'm kicking my wrist as I'm walking. And then my wrist kicks my toe as I'm walking. And then from this posture, we're going to walk out as far out as we can with the arms out and then we're going to walk the feet in. And then we're going to walk the feet out. Really as far out as we can and then we walk the hands in.
and then we're going to draw ourselves up to standing. And then we're going to move into our own practice. So I'm going to end that session here. We're going to move off, we're going to do 50 press ups and 100 sit ups. I want you to think about the concepts tonight when you're doing your press ups and sit ups. I want you to think about varying the pace, varying the technique. So perhaps break them down into a set of 20 on your flats where you're nice and controlled, a set of 10 on your knuckles where you can perhaps shift the weight from either side as you're doing your press ups. Uh, set of 10 where perhaps you come and you pick one hand up, down, up, and a set of 10, you could go collapse, or you could even come down towards the foot and give yourself a real nice 10 pulses. Your call on that one, your 50 press ups, and you can wear them around yourself. And we'll go for 100 sit ups as well. And, and again, mix them up. Mix them up between crunch sit ups, crossovers, bicycles, double crunches. And variations thereof. I'll see you guys around about eight o'clock.